though near the top of life's long hill and ready for its slow decline i feel again my pulses thrill and drink again youth's nerving wine beth day mr c b metting a new york physician says quote, ride a bicycle for one half mile notice the refreshed feeling the quiver of gentle tension the enthusiasm of vigor now try to recall your thoughts during the half mile am i not right when i say that every care and weight has been lifted End quote. it has already been said that the positive tonic effect of this exercise upon mind and body both is marvellous just before these lines were written a lady said to the writer quote, the bicycle has been the greatest of blessings to my husband he has always seemed fairly well but always nervous and at times afflicted with the worst attacks of the blues these never visit him now in the wheeling season and i shall welcome for his sake the opening spring and settled roads end quote perhaps the exhilarating effect of wheeling may be a little like that produced temporarily upon a well-balanced organization unaccustomed to the use of wines by taking a glass of champagne with the difference that the effects of the wheel exercise are natural and those of the wine artificial and that the stimulus produced by the wine must be followed by an intenser reaction as regards cycling the cause of this effect, the writer believes, is not far to seek. Cycling, then, is not only the most available of sports, but, as regards its effects upon the physical well-being, the best and safest, because even a very moderate practice of it brings, to most temperaments at least, a pleasure equal to that which the most violent exertion gives. Thus you will find that many strong and accomplished riders prefer for pleasure riding a gait of from six to eight miles per hour as has already been said one's riding rate will other things being equal depend very much on his temperament and it will be always the nervous enthusiastic rider who will be in danger of overdoing for cycling like every other athletic exercise may be rankly abused for instance a rider has set for himself a forty-mile run over hilly roads a trip which he is easily able to make under favorable conditions two or three miles out the wind shifts and blows lustily in his face from the northeast bringing with it cold and heavy rain he determines not to be stopped by a little thing like that and pushes on over roads growing heavier with every mile he gets wet through and chilled to the bone he and his machine are covered with mud splashes and the wheel begins to run hard as the bearings fill with dirt and water he has to dismount and drag his bicycle up hills that have never troubled him before at length he reaches his journey's end ravenously hungry perhaps but not in condition to eat heartily he will be pretty sure to catch a bad cold or a rheumatism or an indigestion and will be lucky if he has not laid the foundation of some grave functional disorder if you have weak lungs you should not ride at such a pace as to get winded or attempt hard hills if you ride perseveringly stopping whenever you get out of breath and not taking the saddle again until you are fully recovered you will find at the end of each week that your endurance and lung capacity have sensibly increased if moderate exercise on the wheel develops a palpitation or pain about the heart stop at once and do not mount your wheel except under the advice and direction of your physician it may be that the exercise in a moderate degree will cure you or it may be that you must abandon it altogether but you should not be your own judge in the matter as compared with walking cycling requires an increased action of the knee and ankle joints and in addition to the exercises of the muscles used in walking or running it employs another set of muscles for the push movement 
which ordinarily have been but slightly developed. It is therefore in the knee, the ankle, and in the pushing muscles that the beginner is most likely to feel fatigue, and it may require several weeks of practice to bring him into such condition that he can endure a fifty-mile run without some slight lameness of these parts following. So, during the off-season, you will lose something of what you have gained in strength in the muscles which are resting, unless you are within reach of a riding school and practice there for an hour or two each week. In conclusion, give all your leisure for one summer to the wheel, ride wisely and moderately, and you will understand, perhaps for the first time in your mature life, the significance of the expression, a sound mind in a sound body. Dreamless sleep, unobtrusive digestion, clear mental action, wholesome thoughts, and the relish for healthy pleasures, all these will be yours in full measure, and you will see that a new era, not merely of physical vigor, but also of mental and moral health, has been inaugurated by this light, swift, joy-giving, marvelous means of locomotion.